Tijiki and Adafruit bring you The S stands for <laughs> Sensors. That's right. It's from Sensirion. Sensirion, the sensor company. It also sounds like a you know like a Marvel character. Sensirion. Yeah, from, has all the senses. From Planet Sensor. That's right. Um, tragic story. What happened to the Planet Sensor? Uh, yeah. Sensirion is actually. Uh, a spin-off from ETH. I think they're in uh, Switzerland, and they have some offices around the world. And they make great sensors. We love their temperature and humidity sensors, the SHT series. They've been doing this for quite a while. And uh, recently they branched. Well, they've also done carbon dioxide sensors. They also have part particulate sensors. Um, but they branched off into doing gas sensors. And I really like their gas sensors. So um, when I saw this new gas sensor from Sensirion on digikey.com, I was like, sweet. Because I'll make a breakout for it, and like I'll also use that an excuse to like make an INMPI. So this week's INMPI is the SGP forty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's show. Okay. All of it. This is it. So it's a little surface mount chip, and um, what it does is it can measure volatile organic compounds, and does that with an MOX sensor, a mock sensor. It's a metal oxide. So how does that work? Um, well, you know. So sensors have different, basically sensors are, there's not only so many different ways you can measure something. And uh, resistance and capacitance are kind of the most popular. Like either you can somehow turn your thing you're measuring into a resistor, or you can like turn it into like a capacitor, or maybe you can like turn it into a voltage. In this case, what you have is a piece of silicon, and like what you're seeing here is actually like very small. Um, there's a hot plate, but the hot plate's actually just like a, you know, it's actually just PCB material that has like a resistor just like you have on like a 3D printer, it's like a gigantic resistor. On top of it, you have this MOX layer, uh, this metal oxide uh, semiconductor layer that's on top and it's particularly designed so it absorbs hydrocarbons and that changes the resistance. And then you can measure the resistance um, across the sensor. And this is all kind of like embedded MEMS technology. So it's kind of good stuff. Um, the previous sensor that we have been stocking and really like is the SGP30. And this is also a um, gas sensor uh, that does volatile organic compounds and uh, can kind of mimic uh, carbon uh, dioxide measurements from that. It can kind of back calculate them. Um, so the SGP30 is like the previous version. This one's a little bit different. Um, you know, as I played with it today, I wrote a drive where I kind of learned a little bit of the differences. They're basically both gas sensors, um, but this one kind of just pops out volatile organic compound measurement and uh, effective carbon dioxide, whereas um, this new sensor gives you the raw um, metal oxide sensor reading, and then it's calibrated, but it's, so it's the same between uh, chips, but you get the raw reading, and then um, you would use their library to calculate, um, you know, basically uh, air quality. So um, what I like about this is that most metal oxide um, gas sensors you know, you saw that there was this hot plate. So the hot plate is like a resistor and you have to like control that, turn on and off. And it's like, you know, can draw, um, you know, a couple hundred milliamps or like hundred milliamps or so. And then you have to read the resistance and you do that with an op amp or you do that um, with a resistor divider. What I like about the SGP series is it's got like this very basic and very easy to use I squared C interface. And the I squared C isn't that weird. Um, I always drive me a little crazy when some companies, they, they do really unusual I squared C, but, um, you know, this one is actually pretty simple. You send in these uh, two bytes with the command and it returns back, uh, you know, a couple bytes with uh, the data. And there's like only three commands, so you don't have to think too hard. Um, and uh, there's a CRC with the, the byte code, uh, the, the, sorry, the data that comes back, so you can ca calculate the CRC value to make sure you got the right data. But it's, it's pretty simple. You just like send two bytes, receive three bytes. And the data you get back is this raw reading from the, um, the resistance. It's not the exact resistance, but it's, it's a calibrated reading that tells you approximately what the resistance is, like to a calibrated amount. And then they haven't yet at the time of this video released the library for converting that into um, volatile organic compound readings, but hopefully it will be released soon. And I hope they do it in a uh, permissive way so that uh, you can easily use it in various libraries uh, with different chipsets. Um, so yeah, this is basically how they expect you to use it. You would take the SGB40, you'd also grab one of their SHT humidity sensors, 
you use the humidity sensor to like optimize, like you want to kind of make sure that you don't have humidity affecting the measurement because, you know, humidity normally does make the resistance change a little bit. So for the best precision, you would have a humidity sensor as well. You plug that into uh, the driver and then um, out pops um, the VOC index. And uh, I'll try out the code when it arrives, but apparently it gives you a number between like zero and 500. And so it's designed to be a very simple way of um, doing air quality measurements. Um, so when most people talk about air quality, um, and I kind of like this graphic because it's very handy. So air quality has like four different components. Um, and this is the one on the left. This is the VOC, the volatile organic compounds, like ethanols and you know other gases. And I'll show you even alcohol works quite well. At the top, there's CO2. Uh, and Sensorian also has a CO2 sensor. I think it's called the SCD30. Uh, check that out. Um, it's a really great true CO2 sensor. Um, a lot of sensors that are surface mount and low cost, they sort of, they're effective CO2, but they do have a true CO2 sensor. Um, as we mentioned, their relative humidity and temperature sensor series, the SHT series is great. Uh, I love the SHT uh, 3X series, the 30, 31, and 35, uh, different accuracies. And then PM2.5, which will give you like, like particulate, like chunks of stuff, like dust in the air, which is what you have to deal with when yeah. there's forest fires. That was in the news. People know about that now. And we're everyone buying masks. Uh, that was one of the criteria. Is the PM 2.5 the same thing as N95? All sorts of stuff. Yeah. So now right. suddenly everyone's an expert at this. So, uh, so you can pick this up. It's, it's available, machine. of course, on DigiKey. And we have the number 164SGP40DR4CTND. Well, that just means cut tape. That's my eye yeah. exam of the week. And digikey.com forward slash short forward slash ZWZJQB. And you can, of course, just search for it on SGP40 on digikey. Yeah. And check out the SGP30. So they're not exactly the same, they're a little bit different. Um, but they're they're both air quality sensors, and I think this one, when you add their library, I think it'll be able to like give you more information. When you, but you have to do that like yeah. microcontroller based processing. So next up, because I did get a driver working, um, I have here my Cutie Pie board. So I've got I uh, just USB C power connected to a quick connector um, for stomach QT. I reworked one of my SGP30 boards. This is SGP30, but it's actually SGP40. And then I've got the OLED displaying this number. This is like the 16-bit number. So then you're like, well, how do you how do you ev uh, licked a um, a uh, response from a sensor that's um, for air quality? I don't want to reduce the air quality here, but you can um, do a great job with alcohol um, because alcohol is you know an ethanol. So you can. Uh, take the cork from this very nice liquor and you put it near the sensor and you'll see the number is dropping. So it was uh, 27,000, now it's 20,000. I don't know if I get it really close so maybe I can get it to drop even more. Once in a while in the past if there was alcohol around me, I would drop. <laughs> yeah, like that. So your resistance drops. Just like Cuban resistance drops yeah. when alcohol is involved. So you see that you know when I really saturate it, it, um, the resistance goes down, and then when I remove it, it slowly crawls up. And uh, one of the things that they um, really tout about the SGP40 is you're gonna get similar performance from um, chips. So you don't have, the, MOX sensors, uh, gas sensors are known for their variability. You need to calibrate them. These are apparently have a lot less variability from chip to chip, so you don't have to worry about um, the auto calibration procedures that you'll have to do. And also, um, they don't degrade with time. It's another thing that happens to gas sensors. They degrade over time, and the sensor has to be replaced because it gets uh, tarnished, basically, or oxidized. Um, but um, the process they're using for these sensors apparently lasts, they say, up to 10 years. So, uh, yeah, so you see it's already back up to about 25,000. So a great way before you. And that is this week's INMPI. Thank you. INMPI.